Welcome to the Running Network Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. Hi, this is Don Kern with Michigan Runner and the Running Network at Bethel's Beach, New Zealand, just outside Auckland. I'm here for the fifth installment of my Seven Continents Marathon Quest. Tomorrow morning it will be a marathon run on trails all around this area. There's a lot of beautiful scenery out here. It's, it's, this is going to be the toughest one, I think, of the, of the whole adventure. There's an eight-hour time limit on this one. It's going to be a, a tough day out on trails all day long. We have to carry our own water. There's only about four aid stations on the whole course so where we can replenish. It's going to be kind of crazy. I just flew into Auckland today. I ran the marathon in Japan on Wednesday. Uh, stayed there Wednesday night, flew overnight Thursday night, got in. This is Friday afternoon and tomorrow morning I start out on the marathon here. And then we'll leave right after the marathon to head for Florida for number six. It's quite windy out here. Some of the signs you can see uh, say there's uh, bad cliffs, there's quicksand, there's all kinds of great stuff out here, to, ways to hurt yourself if you want to. Uh, New Zealand is known as the adventure capital of the world or the adrenaline capital of the world and it, reasonably so. There's lots of ways to have adventures here. A lot of people come here to hike, a lot of people come here to bungee jump, to skydive, to do all kinds of crazy things. New Zealand is one of my favorite countries. It's a beautiful place. Uh, people are very fr friendly here. Uh, the nice thing about it is everybody here speaks English, which means uh, for a change after my last three marathons where I was in countries where I couldn't even read the signs. I'm at a place where I can actually understand what everybody is saying. It's a great deal. Hi, this is Don. I'm here at the race site of the Spites West Coaster Marathon. Looking forward to starting in about a half hour. It's windy. It's uh, overcast. It's a little bit cool. Not too bad, though. The temperature is going to be nice, I think. But I'm going to start out with a jacket just because it's uh, pretty windy out here. Pretty, uh, pretty um, could get damp before we get too far into it, I think. Might get a little rain this morning, might uh, clear up, supposed to clear up a little bit later, I understand, but uh, everything's looking pretty good right now for a, for a great race. People here are pretty crazy. Uh, the Spites West Coaster Marathon, turns out Spites is actually a beer company, which is a good thing in my book, of course. And i um, looking forward to just a great day out running, uh, getting ready to do some trails. Here we go. It's race day. Okay. I think the jackets are there. My, my concern was I had a flight that night which was going to bring me to Florida and in time for the marathon the next day. Uh, granted, we'd, cro we'd cross the date line. But. So I started out the first 12K. We started out immediately straight toward the beach, straight into a gale force wind with sand blowing in our face and everything else. And before we even got out of the gate, I was the last guy running. And I look up ahead of me and... You know, I kind of kept an eye on uh, the last two people there, and and you know, I was I was kind of keeping them in sight. And we got up the beach, oh, maybe half a mile or so, and then we turned and started uphill. And that's when the trails started. The trails on the first section actually weren't too bad, pretty well defined, pretty easy to follow. We were following little uh, white and red flags that they had uh, tagged on the trees out through there, so it's pretty easy to follow trail. But uh, it wasn't very long I started catching up to these two people in front of me and come to find out it was Mark and Rachel and Rachel turned around and she looks at me and sees me back there and I think Mark was kind of running with his wife and trying to stay back a little bit but she said why don't you go on ahead the crazy man's behind me and I'll uh, I'll run with him and so so Rachel and I got to be really good friends over the course of the next nine hours or so 
But uh, but anyway, we found out a lot about each other and our families and, you know, everybody we related to and what we like to read and what we like to watch on TV and which movies we liked and every other thing in the world. And all of the ups and downs. <laughs> Everything there was to know. <laughs> so... We just kept going and going and going. We got the first, the first loop was, uh, nominally it was 12 kilometers. And um, I don't believe any of these distances they give us. I think they were all longer. But uh, the first loop, we get to about, oh, 11 out of the 12. And all of a sudden the trail disappears and becomes a river. And we look up and sure enough, there's flags in the middle of the river sticking on sticks so that we could follow our way back there. So we, we followed this stream. Yeah, it was only up to our, you know, ankles or a little uh, little above that. Duathlon action there. Yeah, a little bit. of. You know, we didn't have to actually swim, but we did get our feet wet. Uh, we started out thinking we weren't going to have to, but then it soon found it was futile to try to keep our feet dry. And so we just followed the middle of the creek all the way up to the finish of the first section. Then we get on something called the Hillary Trail, named after Sir Edmund Hillary, the famous mountain climber, guy that first summited Everest, and also a Kiwi. And we followed this for what was supposedly 10 kilometers. And this was essentially a mountain climb. We climbed all the way up, uh, followed the trail uphill for almost half of the way to where we were going, maybe a little bit less than half. And, you know, we looked up and... And you know, we look way up above us, and we could see people up on the top. I said, boy, I wonder if the trail's going to go all the way up there. And we look up, and there they are. So we climbed all the way up this thing, and, you know, the footing was a little precarious at times. Some of the some of us had signs said, you know, there's this is fragile, uh, you know, unsure footing. Be real careful. Don't go here if you're prone to uh, being afraid of that kind of thing. And... Um, which I'm not. <laughs> Fortunately. Fortunately. Yes. So I, uh, so we followed this trail and followed it, and the next thing you know, there's people coming back at us because there's, uh, this is also the last section that the the really fast marathoners are in, and also it's also an out and back for the half marathon and the 30k. So we had uh, people coming back at us on a very very narrow narrow trail at times, so it's, kind of made it harder at points because we had to stop and wait for the fast guys to get back by us and and that was slowing us down and we were all going slow already we got to the the next checkpoint supposedly the next section was a 10k section as well so we took off on this and all of a sudden we're on nice groomed downhill road you know and then we turn onto a little trail but it's also groomed it's a nice flat gravel path a little bit downhill and then we started going down sets of stairs. And it was down about 30 sets of stairs. And the next thing you know, you know, somewhere between 10 and 20 steps on each set. And then we get to a bridge that goes across the creek, except we didn't go across the creek. We went to the right and we went down to the trail along the creek. And then we realized why this section was supposed to be really hard. And because we went down the creek a little ways, we cut across the creek through the middle uh, to the other side, and then we tried to follow the trail. And we'd, we'd see the, the, uh, the flags up on the trail, and every time we'd, we'd be looking at our feet a lot, and then we'd look up and realize we hadn't seen a flag in a little bit, and uh -oh. you know, have to backtrack just a little bit and find where, okay, here it is. Oh, look, it went to the other side of the creek. So we'd wait across the creek. And we waited back and forth across the creek a half a dozen times at least. But, uh, you know, finally we managed to get back to that second checkpoint. Uh, in the process, we had to go back down steps a ways, uh, back down to where the bridge was, and then back up all of those steps that we had gone down, and they were pretty stiff on the way back up. We get back to that second checkpoint. Supposedly, we were supposed to be back there by 2 o'clock. It was a little after 2.30. They said, hey, sorry, you're going to have to take a ride back. And I said, no, I can't do that. I'm on a mission here. <laughs> Told him what I was doing, and uh, the, the guy there, Paul, he was with the race staff, and he said, well, okay, but i got to tell you, we're, I'm going to come through right behind you before too long to be pulling down the flags, so um, I'll catch up with you and, and uh, see how you're doing. And so Rachel and I took off. We, we both talked him into the fact that we weren't going to quit, and uh, we kept going and kept going. And about a half hour in, Paul from the race caught up with us. And he kind of escorted us, but he also found out what I was doing. He says, tell me about what you're doing. And uh, so by the time we got back, he had called in and made sure they all knew we were coming and everything was good. 
Meanwhile, my my flight is getting in danger here because I don't know how I'm going to get back to the airport in time. I keep I'm pushing as hard as I can, but I'm just you know it's it's bad footing. It's hard to go, and you know it's we're getting a bunch of hours into this thing. We're already eight hours into it or better, and I don't know what's going to happen. So we kept going, and pretty soon we always started recognizing things. We were heading back downhill down that big mountain that we had uh, gone up on the way there. We get down and finally back to the, almost to the trailhead where you go in and then I know it's not very far from the beach at that point. So we take a last, uh, I take a last right turn. Rachel by this time has dropped back a little bit. Paul stayed back with her, made sure she was okay. And she would end up coming in about 15 minutes behind me. But as we're going down that last little stretch and I think, okay, I know I'm close to the beach. I can see the, the water from where I am. And then as a kind of a last little joke on us, I think, they <laughs> had to go back across this pool, through this pool of water to get it over to where the, the little campground was, where we had started the whole thing. And I pulled into that one at about nine hours and 35 minutes and got my, got my finisher's medal and everything. But right by this time, I'm panicking and I'm like, okay, I got to get myself cleaned up and get out of here. And so, you know, I, I did have time for, they handed me a beer immediately, of course. And because um, that's what Kiwis do. They're good folks, like I said. Great country. <laughs> that's a great country. And uh, gave me a couple beers. And um, Spites, in fact, the, the title sponsor is a beer company. So uh, it worked out really good. Gave me a beer and a sausage and, uh, and helped me get a little recovered there for a second. I took a shower in one of those outdoor rinse off the beach sand type of showers. I just dumped a bunch of shampoo on my head and stripped down to my shorts and, and uh, got cleaned up and and then got um, got my clothes on and went back and rinsed my feet off again and put my shoes on and, you know, kind of took off for the airport in a panic. I didn't even stay around waiting for Rachel to finish because I was going to miss my flight as it was. 